Now I'm ready to send this project to Rhino. Now, where do you find the Rhino plugin? Uh, first of all, this is important to know before we get started. Below the library menu where we order data, you have an extensions tab. Here you can browse all the extensions and also the desktop integrations that we have in Forma right now. So if we scroll down, you'll see Revit add-in and Rhino uh, add-in as well. And this is where you can download the add-in the first time and also access our Rhino documentation as well. Next, I'm going to head into Rhino. I've drawn up some very simple volumes that we want to bring into Forma. To open the Forma add-in in Rhino, we can type in Forma in the command bar, and this brings this little plugin window up. And I'm just going to connect that to my layers on the side here. What this dialog box shows is, first of all, uh, it asks you to enter the project URL that you want to connect your Rhino project with. So here we need to fetch the link from Forma, head into Rhino, and then we simply paste that in there. So please close this page. We are ready to go. If we now look in the Forma uh, box, we can see that the proposal one, which is the only option that I had, has been uh, loaded uh, into the pull down menu here. We have the option to fetch data from Forma. And we also, at the bottom, we can um, define the properties of the Rhino geometry in, in Forma term. So we're going to stick with proposal one, and I'm going to fetch the context from, from Forma. It's telling me that the buildings uh, are provided by a third party. Okay. Some countries where there are certain export restrictions on data from Forma to Rhino. So depending on where you are in the world, that might apply. And you'll then get a little warning saying, for example, um, you can display building data, but you can't bake them in, into the project, for example. Now we have brought in our building data, our terrain data, our vegetation, and our roads. You can see the model that I drew in Rhino doesn't really align with the site limit. So the first thing that we need to do, and this probably applies to the majority of projects, your model will be located far away from the uh, form of file, which is uh, globally georeferenced, is we need to calibrate their locations. The way that you do that is either you move the context from Forma to your model, or you move your model to the site limit. Most people would probably prefer not to move their Rhino model around, so we can move the the, the Forma context rather. So the first thing I'm going to do then is just lock my default layers, which is where my model is located. I'm going to select the site limit. I'm going to click move. And I'll just move that into place to align with um, my building here. The reason that we did this before baking any of the context into the Rhino model is that then everything will shift with the site limit. So here you can see the uh, different Forma elements that we brought in. We brought in the terrain, the buildings, the vegetation, and also the roads. Right now, these are just, they're just references. They're not really in the project, but we could, if we wanted to, we could bake the buildings into the project and we could do the same with the terrain uh, as well. And now these are mesh files um, that are added to their own layers in, in Rhino. I'm going to now go ahead and actually lock the um, site limit and so on in place and unlock my default building layers because the next thing I want to do is I want to tag the Rhino geometries with Forma uh, building elements and functions. And the reason for doing that, you don't have to do it, but when we then bring the model back into Forma, we're able to read the appropriate area metrics because we'll know whether this is an office space or a commercial space or a residential space, and also whether it's a building, whether it's a generic volume, whether it's a constraint or whether it's um, vegetation. 
I'm going to select this building first. It's in my default layer at the moment. Um, I think I'm going to use the layers up here, layer one, layer two, and layer three. And I'm just going to go ahead and give them names on the side. Commercial and offices to make it easy. So I'll tag this as an office space. I'm going to go ahead and tag this as a residential building. And finally, the one on the side here can be a commercial space. If we scroll down in our um, menu here, you can now see we have residential offices and commercial as well on the top. So those are the layers that we want to push back into Forma again. And for each layer, you can choose whether these are buildings, constraints, generic volumes, or vegetation. That's basically how they're going to be read in Forma. All of these are buildings, so I've chosen buildings for all of them. And uh, we can also specify the function they should have in Forma. So I made it a little bit easy for myself by just tagging it, um, tagging the layers residential. This one is offices. I change. There we go. And commercial buildings. Perfect. Got three layers selected, commercial offices and residential. And then I can send these back into Forma again. Okay, let's head back to our project, back to proposal one, which is where we pushed the geometry, and there we have it. Sometimes you need to refresh the page for these to appear. Um, this time it, it worked without, which is good, but if you don't see them immediately, try to refresh the page. The volumes or areas are also accounted for in our area metric breakdown on the side. So we have our gross floor area, our rentable area, our floor area ratio, and divide it then into the different function types. Note that you can also create your own area metrics um, based on these default ones if you want to do that. And you can uh, also uh, adjust the factors and ratios that we use to calculate them.